位同事。Good afternoon, members. Performed a Torah. It is also time to start, so I call the meeting to order. Item one: confirmation of minutes of our meeting. Minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of April 2017, which has been sent out to you. Prior to the meeting, we haven't received any proposed amendments. Can I check with you on the spot? Any amendments, please? No. Then, members, please confirm the minutes. Since the last meeting, a few information papers have been issued, including, first of all, a booklet entitled "Progress Made by the Current Term Government on Mainland Cooperation 2012-2017," published by the Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Bureau. Paper CB one one thousand slash sixteen to seventeen bracket zero one. Second paper is an information paper on the financial position of the Applied Research Fund for the period from first September to thirtieth November twenty sixteen. Paper CB bracket one. One zero five three slash sixteen to seventeen bracket zero one. The third one is a report on the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies and the World Trade Organization Parliamentarian Workshop 2017 held in Singapore from the 15th to 17th May 2017, provided by Dr. Edward Yield. Paper CB bracket two sixteen fifty seven slash sixteen to seventeen bracket zero one. In relation、um, to the、uh, workshop that he attended,、uh, Edward Yu has already、uh, reported to the House Committee. I'll give the floor to Dr. Yu so as to give us a brief、um, uh, report, so that we can also report、uh, follow on that.、Uh, has been submitted to the panel, which summarises my observations during my attendance at the parliamentarian workshop. On International Trade 2017, held in Singapore from 15 to 17 May 2017.、Uh, basically, I、uh, would just like to、uh, point out、uh, my three recommendations. The first one is、uh, that I consider the workshop useful and worthy of participation, as it will help us to understand better about the、uh, WTO、uh, works on encouraging international trade. And the second recommendation is that、uh, since Hong Kong is one of the participating members in the Doha Development Agenda, so、uh, I urge the government of Hong Kong to report the updated status of the Doha Development Agenda to our panel. And the third recommendation、uh, is about the recent meeting on e-commerce. Since Hong Kong has co-sponsored an informal paper to the Committee on Trade and Development of WTO, so I urge the government of Hong Kong to report the results of the meeting and the progress of any facilitating policies on e-commerce in Hong Kong. That's it. Thanks. Okay. 唔该晒姚议员。咁姚议员有三个建议啦。咁 Thank you, Dr. Yu,、um, for the th- second and the third recommendations.、Um, We would like to urge the administration to update us on the progress of the Doha Development Agenda, and then we also want the administration to tell us about the conclusions of a particular meeting. Of the WTO, the impact of e-commerce on Hong Kong. We want to get more information, so that for these two important topics,、uh, we'll be able to understand the latest position. And I would like to invite our secretariat to take this up on behalf of us. That is for the two recommendations made by、uh, Dr. Yu. Please invite the administration to give us further information. But of course,、uh, we have to wait till the next term before we can have a、um, discussion. Thank you,、uh, Dr. Yu. Next, I would like to invite the secretariat to briefly talk about the progress of our overseas duty visit to Israel.、Um, we are going to visit、uh, Israel between the 22nd and the 28th of July.、Um, last week,、uh, we reported to the House Committee, so I would like to defer to the clerk to the commit、uh, to the panel.、Um, If you have questions, I'm sure the clerk can follow them up for us.
Uh, thank you, Chair. Just want to inform the CIP that it is on the 16th of June. The House Committee has given approval um, to our panel to conduct an overseas duty visit to Israel. On that day, the House Committee was made aware of the purpose of the program or the objectives of the duty visit. Uh, Eleven members in total have put down their names. Eight are panel members. Three are non-panel members. And um, Upon the visit of this panel, uh, two public officers from the Innovation uh, and Technology Commission uh, will also join us on the duty visit. Um, there was a scientific consultant and also a director concerning uh, biotechnology. And then we have also got some staff members on the visit as well, so a team of a total of 16 members. As to the program of our duty visit, we are still in the process of liaising with the Consul General of Israel. And we have been given assistance uh, by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Israel. And so we are going to get a tight program and we'll be visiting many organizations. So much from me. Thank you. All right. If there aren't other uh, questions, then we'll go to item four of the agenda. Yes, Mr. Mock. When are we going to get the tentative program so that we can have a look and give comments for the final round? Secretary, as to the latest position, we need to take up the matter with the Consul General. Um, in fact, this morning, the Chair and myself met with the Consul General. As to the latest program, I understand that they have got further views as to the specific uh, venues and activities. Uh, they are yet to be finalized. Uh, we hope to finalize the program two weeks before the actual visit. All right. Uh, if uh, we can finalize it uh, early, then we will uh, send a paper to inform members ASAP so that if you have got any views, then we can still um, note your comments uh, before the next meeting. In case you want to adjust the program properly, we need to get assistance from the um, Israeli uh, government. Is the fine okay? Next, I want to remind you of the date of our next meeting. It will be the 18th of July, a Tuesday at 2:30 p.m. There will be two items for discussion. First of all, development of the inno cell. Um, I think. We did have a discussion in the past. The purpose is to help those involved in innovation technology to have a space to work from. Well, in fact, it is a financial uh, proposal. So uh, please note the proposal. And if you have got any views, make sure that you attend our meeting. Otherwise, there will be a lot of policy issues um, that uh, would be involved if you only uh, raise them at the Finance Committee meeting. The chair may rule us out of scope. So the, it is a uh, financial proposal. It will go to the Finance Committee uh, seeking approval. So please note this point. As to the second point, that's about the trade relations between the mainland and Hong Kong. So in other words, um, items one and two on the list of outstanding items. Uh, all right. Uh, if you haven't got other views, then uh, on the 18th of July, we're going to have those two items for our agenda. Okay. That takes us to the fourth item on the agenda, and that's about uh, the progress report on research and development centers for 2016-17. Um, at this moment, I would like to invite the government officials to join us. Please note that um, the government would like to report to us about the work carried out by the five R&D centers under the um, ITC. Let's welcome the government representatives. 
um, please take notice that the administration had prepared, um, <coughs> prepared a document, a rather thick one, in um, CB bracket 11144 slash 161703. And the Secretary also prepared a um, background material, um, which is um, 1144 slash 161704. And the NTC Commissioner and will give us an um, opening speech. I know that um, you will be have a six minute um, short clip regarding the R and D centers. Commissioner, please. Thank you, Chairman. And f um, for the details on the f uh, f five R and D centers action report, please let me go through it simply. This five R and D centers and have been um, established by the Hong Kong government um, for its, its targets sectors or research and development. And we can see it in the past year or so, um, their performances uh, are what we consider as satisfactory. And these five centers uh, managed to um, secure 20% of industry contribution. And um, that was back in 2001 through 2014. Had had established um, a certain standard for them to reach what they are able to meet. And we can see the industry quite supportive of these R&D centers. In the past year, the R&D centers had um, begun um, 135 projects, of which over one-third of those, had uh, 48 of them, them are collaborative projects. The many of these that um, the uh, competition uh, from the industry, it's about um, 30 to 50 percent, or even more. In other words, um, this better reflected the uh, industry support. Thus, um, their work and has been clashed uh, with uh, reality in helping the industry to enhance. And each R and D centers have assigned a 68 um, an, uh, partnership agreement. An increase of 25 percent last year, and we can see that the R and D outcomes to be um, transferred to the industry, and for the uh, public sector trial scheme, and from from 2011 has in 109 projects in place, and at the um, Geneva. Uh, occasions. Um, our R and D centers have um, scored pretty good results <coughs> and win win number of prizes, especially the major prizes. And then only not not win prizes. Not, let's say um two years ago, the, uh, the award winning projects were able to be transferred an industry for production or applied to their own products. And that's our simple reproduction. So let's um, play a very short clip <clears throat> to go through um, the work of high artist centers in the past year. Five R&D centers have been set up. We are concerned about uh, R&D, and we work closely with the industries to develop innovation and technology. We commercialize the um, R&D results so as to enhance the standards of our living. And the R&D centers have close uh, relationships with their respective industrial sectors, and they have become reliable uh, partners of our industrial sectors. For the APS automotive parts and accessories, um, R and D center. Uh, we are concerned about the key technologies involved in the automobile industry. Well, electric vehicles are getting more and more common, but then charging stations are inadequate in Hong Kong. And even after charging uh, the battery, you can only travel for a hundred kilometers or so. So it is quite a headache if you run out of energy. Well, we need to be connected with the electricity network. Location and type of energy supplied uh, would require considerable consideration. Usually, you only get a few charging uh, spaces uh, at car parks, and then there may be difficulties with connectivity. Therefore, our company worked together with Apex, and we have come up with a uh, smart uh, charging uh, station. Well, um, this is a very good uh, one. We have the uh, 
it can uh, suit different uh, models, and you will just uh, take 40 uh, minutes, and then uh, a car can be fully charged. And we have also got a mobile mobilized fast charger for EV. And if you are stored on the road, and it takes five to seven minutes, and then you can travel another 20 km, and then you can go to a nearby charging station to be charged. For the S3, uh, we have been making use of the big data analytics so as to uh, facilitate investors who are not familiar with programming. And in fact, um, we will have automated programs so that the investors will not be emotionally affected by the market conditions and they will be more objective. And then for this um, competition, uh, in fact, this is a smart investment platform. and. Uh, and in this way, it will mean that we can try the uh, technology. It means that uh, we can have further development. And in fact, there will be uh, applications in related financial services. For Hong Kong Leader, and we have um, developed uh, something for our fencing team. And in fact, um, it has been given a silver medal at the International Exhibition of Inventions of Geneva. It is a asymmetric footwear. Uh, well, we will be um, having uh, different functions uh, for the two legs to two feet. And in this way, uh, this pair of shoes will take care of the needs of the athletes to be um, sort of uh, having a good support. So we are going to have anti-vibration uh, or shock abs uh, absorption uh, features. And in, for this one, we have the anti-friction uh, material so as to make sure that the speed uh, will be uh, optimal. For the LSCM, and then for the first time, uh, we have got this um, RFID um, hybrid uh, scanner. And in fact, we tie in with the work of the airport authorities' um, home printed luggage tech service, where in fact uh, customers can do it uh, at home prior to the arrival at the airport, and you can uh, shorten the time in front of the counter. It can also enhance the efficiency of the airport operations. Well, water seepage is a commonly seen problem at households. Usually, you have a waterproof paint on the wall. When NAMI has uh, come up with this uh, invention, there will be uh, nanofiber on the surface, and then we can uh, make sure that um, the waterproof uh, material will be very um, good and has been awarded a silver medal. And for the waterproofing materials, the net, um, in fact, it has been developed and applied. Well, for this waterproofing material, it has successfully addressed the inadequacies of the products in the market. It is also um, very convenient to use. It has wide applications. At first, we try to have a production line on the mainland to make sure that we have quality assurance and to support reindustrialization in Hong Kong. So in 2016, we decided to have a uh, production plant and a production line in Hong Kong. Uh, with the technological support of NAMI, we have been able to um, start our production in June 2016. And in fact, we have been able to apply the coating to over 6,000 square meters of the site, covering different kinds of uh, uh, facilities, rooftops, toilets, external walls, tanks, etc. And uh, we'll continue to support applied research, and we will we'll try to benefit the public in general. All right, so we have uh, finished the video clip, and I will open the floor to members for questions. And uh, I we suggested four minutes each for both the question and the answer. Um, really. Thank you, Chairman. Every year, um, the R&D centers <coughs> um, controllers report to us. And I've been hearing the briefing for many years, and I feel that um, there are new progress had indeed been made, and especially some areas about working with the industry and com commercialization. We can see some results. However, 
in the future, maybe do maybe do um, the could officials offer some uh, concrete um, evidence? Let's say, um, how many companies have used uh, our products and in terms of the employment employed and the revenue generated in the uh, market performances? Maybe um, we could offer such examples for the members of the public, which uh, would uh, beneficial. For the uh, continued support, however, um, we do hear some examples, of which um, these companies, through working with the R&D centers, and found that um, it lacked a policy or other um, support for, let's say, a company in the business of um, manufacturing a facial mask and from, uh, using a technology from Nami. Uh, however, when I talked to them, I found that um, you would only uh, require local hospitals to, um, to uh, use them and to apply for the uh, relevant government fund subsidy program. They wouldn't be willing to do that. And so examples was like that. Uh, what it would not be repeated here. However, this is not what we like to focus on. However, there are a lot of situations which make people see that um, that internally there are some departments that could have been proactive, um, adopt more of these products. However, due to different reasons, they could not do that, or even more so, uh, some of the policies that might have them some uh, un unharmonized issues. However, let's say um, the electric charging vehicles, I'm sure um, that the coming year, less electric vehicles will be sold. This is probably at, on, on this at, at a higher policy level, of causing incongruence. Would you let us know that in the future, uh, maybe it's really hard to speak for the next term of government. Um, can we hope that um, there will be um, better p policy consistency so that um, the R&D re results in terms of the market and the, po the policy probably not they want to care about. However, this is what exactly bothered them, bothered them the most. And Chairman, thank you for um, Mr. Mark's comments. Just the first, concerning the um, employment opportunities generated, um, we would like to try to we will collect data of this kind. However, this is probably not as clear cut. For example, some kind of products um, they would have a new production line, and that would be quite easy to. Get such information. However, for some other situations, maybe um, enhance existing if production lines efficiency that would not be as um, easy to collect or any market entering the market. We hope that we would be able to gather such data in the future. As uh, if the uh, companies willing to provide them, we will we'd have to. A, um, um, supply them to the this chamber and concerning the policies and the uh, pub with the public sector adopted products um, in relation to your example that we understand we hope that um, in where there is relations we can tie in with the issues for example the public bodies uh, if they need to um, I don't care information that we used to use the product maybe we could try out this new product and in terms of procurement, or uh, where they have uh, financially not permitting, um, for example, not buying something used to do, so maybe they could use the uh, public sector trial scheme that we could subsidize them. That we have a lot of examples that um, we did you offer to pay them yet to wouldn't willing to try them. As for the individuals, organizations, whether they'll be willing to try it out. I could not uh, use a gun to point at them to, to make them use it. This is not a matter of policy. This would do about a matter of willingness because the government needs the results. So if not achieve your results, let's say if there are in one in isolated cases unwilling about there are some others are more willing to try. Thus, on the public sector trial scheme, in the past six years, uh, we have uh, over 100 year old pr um, projects running and about. Uh, 150, 160 um, subsidized organizations or public bodies are trying out different products. And after the trial, um, I hope that um, more progress will be made. And that we have communicated with the um, social services sector, 
whether they could actively promote them or the intern we could in do it more uh, introduced more internally to encourage uh, the trial and in the future our buru Oh, um, this um, uh, um, issues for this fund that would improve the uh, community's livelihood. That would ho help to leverage on. That would be something we continue to do. As for um, other things that would require more coordination. Let's say if um, it had to do with um, regulations and so forth. That would be a more complicated matter because um different um bureaus have different considerations, and that would be um, um we communicated to them. And um from the commission's level, we tried our best to um promote the R and D results. Mr. Chan, And at the after news, we see the introduction of LCSM on the um, invention of elderly products. And um, what we see in the clip is quite encouraging. And the R&D would aim to add important elements that enhance Hong Kong competitiveness. And in recent years, the government have been um, encouraging this. However, on the paragraph 7 of the document, I have some curious about. And for the ash tree and the NAMI and the it seems to be Take up the highest expenditure, and for the uh, the year before, compared to the years, seem to have a drop in terms of expenditure. Can the government explain? Uh, um, and for the because S three is from the recurring subvention, and the rest of them um, probably um, is a one of funding from the um, and from the um, innovation technology fund. Is there any reason for them for them to? Um, and that's a good question. With paragraph nine, on the industry contribution that reflected whether there was that the audience work is supported as serve as important in indicators. However, the smallest ship amount besides a NAMI is growing. The other four, the level contribution has actually dropped, and even though um the to me and and explained that. We're not emphasizing um, that should um, be in focus on getting more contribution. Would the government try to understand besides of this one of factors? And um, was that um, because um, there we are, whether it had to do with the low applicability or the higher sponsorship barrier or the business sector had not put enough focus on it? As well, if government have focus on the reasons. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for your question. Well, for table one. In relation to the percentage change, well, in fact, the drop is a uh, small one. It is uh, sometimes due to operational uh, changes. It may be it so happens that a staff member has left and we haven't got anybody filling the post, and then it means that expenditure has been reduced. So sometimes we do have such a sort of uh, factor behind the variation. But basically, I think they have been maintaining a more or less this. Uh, at the, a similar level of activities. Well, um, you may think that um, there has been a reduction, but in fact, the magnitude is a small one. Other than the case of APEX, uh, this is because for our R and D centers, uh, usually they need um, seed projects or platform uh, projects from time to time. They are more visionary and they are sort of more midstream. So we need to come up with the basic technologies. Uh, we gather the knowledge, and then um, we need to have the technology in place, and then we have to cooperate with the industry further in relation to applying the uh, technology. So sometimes uh, we may have, uh, relatively speaking, more seed projects and platform projects, and you may think that uh, we are cutting down on the um, amount of resources. But then, starting from 2017 onwards, um, uh, we can see that um, this is uh, the case. And then, for industry contribution or industry sponsorship. Uh, sometimes they want to commission us. Say, for example, their full trust in the R and D center. They want to entrust a particular task with a R and D center, or 
uh, after a particular seat project, um, there would be the uh, need to transfer the technology, and there will be a licensing arrangement. So a license will be granted. Well, um, we don't call it uh, contribution or sponsorship directly. Uh, starting from this year, we are saying that perhaps we simply uh, look at the income from industries, and then that will cover uh, R and D contracts, income from technology transfer, etc. So. We are still saying that um, thirty percent should be the overall percentage. Um, since we are grouping a lot under that title, and so you may think that we are sort of increasing the level to a much higher level. Um, so we have collaborative projects, and we have got uh, contract R and D work, and we hope that we can better reflect uh, the recognition given by the industry to the work of an, of the R and D centers. Mr. Chen, any follow up questions? No, Dr. Lo, thank you, Chair. I want to pick up the point made by Mr. Chen, that is the level of industry contribution. Uh, I would like to see the comparison between 2015-16 and 2016-17. We have seen increases for some centers and decreases for others. Um, replies have been given, so I would not follow that up. However, when we look at the way forward, if you care to turn to paragraphs 20 and 21, I think they are important. Starting from 2017-18, there will be new performance indicators. Um, industry contribution level will be a key indicator, but then um, there are also uh, other ways to allow for industry participation. In paragraph 21, we know that there will be other performance indicators like the number of R&D projects involving industry participation, number of companies participating in the projects, number of organizations benefiting from the PSTS, number of interns engaged, and the number of patents filed. I think it is good, and uh, we, we should have such indicators, and we should be given such uh, important data. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the number of patents filed. I think they are R&D centers. It is important to look at their R&D results, and the number of patents filed and uh, obtained will be a very good indicator. We are told that they will come into effect starting from 2017-18 onwards, but I'm sure you have some uh, information from previous years. Can you give such information um, about uh, the number of patents filed in previous years, either on the spot or uh, after the meeting? I would like to declare interest. I'm also on the board of the NAMI, but of course I'm not remunerated. I'm only doing it as a volunteer. I'm also um, a director on the board of the uh, Science Park. Yes, after the meeting, I can give you the details concerning the number of patents filed uh, pertaining to different R&D centers. Well, since the uh, PIC of the various R&D centers are also present, so can they briefly talk about the uh, number of patents filed? Um, I think probably for S3, they have relatively uh, more uh, patents being filed. Um, Maybe we can uh, get the uh, officers involved to give us an idea. Yes, for the S3, about a thousand have been filed. Uh, about 700 have been approved. About half of them from the U.S., half from uh, China. They are the major markets um, where we have filed the uh, patent applications. I think this uh, this is an important indicator. It shows that uh, we have attained results. I think you need to find a way to showcase your success to the public. If you can disseminate the message, then there will be positive interaction. And perhaps uh, the patents will be uh, benefiting us more. Two years ago, we worked together with BU Hong Kong as well as the 
Polytechnic U. Uh, we have the IP pool. This is because we are mainly talking about the applications in ICT. So we want to group them together and then we would like to beef up the ICT sector. I think Dr. Lowe was talking about the need for individual R&D centers to talk more about the performance indicators, like the number of patents filed. And then, um, Commissioner, maybe you can also uh, talk about this later on. Now, you have um, said it at 30%. Please justify why 30%. Why you think that 30% would be good enough? It was 20%. You are grouping other factors under uh, this item as well, but why 30% only? Mr. Gill. Thank you, Chair. Just now, in the video uh, clip, we are told about the R&D results. And then uh, it appears that they are for local application only. I want to know whether they have also been sort of applied in overseas market or in the mainland market. Can you sort of Tell us about the examples of our R and D results given recognition and being applied extensively in the world or in Southeast uh, Asia. I took part uh, recently in an exchange session on the Bay Area for the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau uh, Bay Area. Well, we cover a total of 60 million uh, people. The GDP was $8 trillion in the year 2015. So in this case, I want to know whether you can make good use of the opportunity of the Bay Area so that um, you can sort of uh, work together with the cities and municipalities in Guangdong and Macau. Now, they will uh, provide a very big market, uh, 60 million people instead of just 7 million people. And maybe we can get uh, concessions in terms of the uh, customs and tariff. Perhaps that should be considered as a way forward for our R&D centers. Thank you, Mr. Gill, for your uh, comments. Uh, just now, we have given you some examples. We talked about the adoption of the R&D results uh, by the local organizations. But it doesn't mean that we are confining ourselves to the local market. Well, a local organization may adopt the new technology and it um, has a new product, but then the product can be offered uh, to the other markets like uh, the Southeast Asian markets. For the uh, R&D results of our five centers, first of all, we hope that we can benefit the local enterprises. But of course, if other enterprises in other markets are also interested, uh, surely we can consider whether we can have technology transfer to them. Well, um, take the Rita as an example. They have got the recycling of the materials. Um, in fact, they have already got an international brand promising that it will be taken by them. It may not be a, it isn't a local fashion brand. It is a renowned international fashion brand. Uh, but then we're talking about local suppliers and also production uh, lines on the mainland. So um, many enterprises, um, maybe uh, local enterprises, but then they have production lines in uh, Asia. So we can't simply uh, talk about local companies, local markets, or uh, if we uh, transfer the technology of an overseas enterprise and we are not benefiting the local uh, business. It isn't as simple as that. What interests us would be to make sure that it is applicable. 
and we hope that the local talents are also uh, mastering the technology, and then it will benefit us in the long term. I agree. Uh, the Bay Area is near to us. It is also a huge market. If the R&D centers can work together with the enterprises in the uh, Bay Area cities, then it stands a high chance that we can commercialize the R&D results. Are you going to study the opportunity arising from the Bay Area? I'm sure the R&D centers will do this. Um, I'm sure they will see if they can find any partners for cooperation in the Bay Area. And the Belgian Road Initiative will also uh, offer potential markets, and then we can identify partners in such uh, markets. All right, um, Dr. Edward Yu, thank you, Chair. If I may get uh, three items of information. I want the papers. Give us the link. You don't need to print out the hard copies. First of all, the review report of the proposals. If the R&D results have been um, reported or included in international journals, please uh, tell me. And please also tell us about the specifications. And then for the inventions, uh, after they have been commercialized, uh, do you have the review reports uh, like the effectiveness and also the way forward? Um, so I'm interested in the information in the three sectors. Do you want me to provide specific examples? You talk about the international journals. Uh, sometimes some of the inventions are sort of reported in the journals. Do you want me to give you the examples or what? Well, um, it depends. Sometimes um, we may have a sort of review report. Um, I think it really depends on what we have got with us, and we have to look at our partner because it may involve commercially sensitive information. We have to check with our partners as to which can be disclosed. <coughs> Would it do if I give you some examples in each field uh, so that you can have an idea? Well, I think it's better to attach more importance to the system itself, the mechanism itself. You talked about your sort of uh, governance, your management. Uh, you fetch the proposals. You evaluate the um, proposals. Which consultant uh, was involved in vetting the proposals? So I'm interested in the mechanism. Uh, you talk about quality assurance, and then um, the R&D results uh, will be commercialized. You also carry out a review or evaluation. So please tell us about the um, workflow, the mechanism, and then support it with some examples. Uh, all right, next, Mr. Wang Ting Kuang. Mr. Wang, thank you, Chairman. Um, the R&D centers have come to report the last few many years. However, this year, I found our new projects and new inventions that I'm glad to see that these new inventions were able to benefit the, the public. And, and it was widely adopted in Hong Kong that would prove that the products are in actual application and able to be developed in the market. And unfortunately, and all those in, introductions that um, we haven't seen these kind of products available in the market. That I'd like to ask, and for all these I many inventions and covering all aspects of daily life, and um, um, have you done any work on um, in promotion? And this R and D outcomes are working collaborating with the industry. So um, what sort of demands do these um, partners have? I'm, I'm chairman. It really depends on the R&D outcome itself. There are many come at different types. One of the more uh, 
I'm feels like like I'm the nano face mask facial mask. This is an award winning. And the uh, 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 industry partner, we actually had a whole new production line in Hong Kong for this, and um, they they actually out in the market, uh, available. So if you um visit to a um local chain pharmacy, you could you can actually buy them, and actually promoting the product to other markets for retail. That's um. The, the real promotion really depends on the company because it had made an investment in, in, into the production. Another type would be, um, let's say, the introduction. Uh, we, we're working with, with the airport or the post office. Um, they would actually apply such technology in their um, daily work. Um, uh, you may, may feel that. Um, what is visible is more tangible. However, um, there are always new technology in place, and this is actually um, the fruits of our R&D. And some of them are uh, less tangible or un un obvious. Or let's say S3, they have some sort of technology that been adopted by enterprise in their own products. And because of it, and their enterprise would actually get uh, get listed in the stock market. That um, might not be um, obvious at a quick glance. However, they have been widely adopted. It very much depends on the technology itself, how would it apply, adopt it. And some of them uh, would be um, easily identified in public, and some of them would be harder. Our work and for HRD centers would be as much as possible once um, they have a new product or an they would try to um, apply it as many areas as possible. Sometimes for the same technology, um, they would need uh, some modifications for different applications. That we would try our best. That was actually our mission. And Chairman, um, the Commissioner, in uh, uh, the short video, have referred, uh, let's say an example, on um, the um, EV mobile chargers. Uh, um, uh, the e electronic vehicles are popular in Hong Kong. and. Uh, one of the problems with not every car park or at your own parking lot has such charging facilities. And if even if they have them, it may not be like those in Let's Go. Um, they, they would not and, um, on, be on a much slower charging speed. Now that I see you're having an invention, however, they're not available in the market that could really benefit us um, um, I, I, something that really touches me that we say to rely on the um, partner to come back on the market promotion um, had the S3 had an agreement with his uh, partners into how to step up their promotion it also has to do with each RD centers efficiency and payoff if you have a good publicity and then you will have a higher payoff um thank you chairman just responding to mr wong's example um can we have um a pass um mr loy to explain the ch ch how do you uh, promote the um fast charger and what is currently the market situation and in, in, in the market, our R&D results in getting a, a promotion. And in um, July the sixth, we have a press conferences um, to, um, to um, introduce how do we support the installation. And last year, we have a newly formed. Can we disclose the company name? Is a, a, a joint. A smart charge by Hong Kong Telecom and, and, and China Empower. We're actually adopting our R&D outcome. Because there are two. One is called Cable Plus, and one is called Cornerstone. And they're manufacturing smart chargers for the companies which already installed the charging facilities. 
and in our current R&D, we have to exploit wireless charger, so the wear environment wouldn't permit um, uh, for uh, large charging facilities. I hope that this wireless chargers uh, would be able to help the users. Thus, um, we have this um, t technology support and um, research in helping the industry to um, tap into different markets, especially for opening mainland markets. Would you have a lot of uh, support measures to fitting the mainland standards? And besides, though, as shown in the clip, um, um, the European American standards, we also help the um, industry to crack into the mainland market into um, complying with their standards. Time's up. Ms. Chang. Thank you, Chairman. Next to me, next door is also have a meeting. So um, um, I apologize if I'm asking questions that will be raised by other members beforehand. I would like to ask um, that for the seed projects, they don't have sponsorship, right? Why don't we uh, can, uh, consider accepting um, industry contribution for the seed projects? So even though they might be of high risk, however, the market there there are a lot of new uh, new products waiting to be um, invented, or there are a lot of angel investors or venture capital willing to make such investment. So maybe if we lower the um, um, levels, so, so they make the, the more people to offer sponsorship. Um, for these seed projects, we said we that we do not require them investment. However, if they ex uh, there are uh, enterprises willing to will contribute, we're more than welcome. The seed projects are usually more a uh, visionary, uh, forward-looking project. However, some enterprises, like Ms. Chang has said, are also interested in such kind of projects, even though it is probably far from uh, an application. However, in terms of the um, development, however, in the knowledge, will be interested. So um, sometimes we have enterprises that would approach us of making a lower level of contribution. Um, however, um, the R&D centers must uh, keep uh, on uh, moving forward in terms of the technology level. Thus, uh, 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 however, we can't can't well, can't say rest on all the the old projects. We have to keep on having new mindset and new R&D projects. And um, this seed, this seed project, what in place would help them to open up new areas and invent new technologies. Thus, an in terms of subsidy to this project, there were a, uh, um, a certain subsidy for the seed projects. Uh, it's better if we get an interest contribution. Even if we don't have them, we will offer the funding. Or, uh, for the seed project in the past. Um, if they're in collaboration with the uh, um, industry or having a high level of, spawn of uh, contribution, that I feel that will be more down to earth. So, and we do need contributions from both types of projects. That I'm really glad to learn from the commissioner that they would encourage the contribution. So why don't we enlist, uh, include that in the plan? Yes. Actually, for each R&D centers every year would um, include a certain number of seed projects, and at the same time, uh, we have a, a certain number of collaborative projects. For both types, we do have uh, uh, we would, we would uh, keep on enhancing their uh, knowledge and technology. Mr. Chairman. Now there are five R and D centers, or four centers, and the S three. The administration has invested heavily in the five uh, centers. I want to know whether we can have a better idea about the effectiveness of their work. Now, would you cooperate uh, with others? You develop a technology, and the technology can be sort of turned into a product and very popular in the market. 
I think we want to share the good news. So can you sort of tell us more about the effectiveness of your work, Commissioner, um, a report? Yes, uh, thank you, um, Dr. Enjang, for your proposal. We agree with you on the way forward. So starting from this year, we are going to have new performance indicators. Say, for example, the income from the industry in the form of uh, contribution or the number of contract work as well as income from the um, licensing. So this will show whether we are sort of uh, being pragmatic and uh, carry our work relevant to the needs of the industry. We also look at the number of companies participating. The higher the number, the more relevant we are to the needs of the industry. And we want to know the number of organizations um, interested in the PSTS. We want to know the number of interns engaged and the number of patents filed. Well, um, the number of projects will determine the number of interns. So uh, such indicators can tell us that in terms of nurturing our young R&D staff members, uh, will tell us about the degree of cooperation with the industry and whether um, the R&D work is relevant to the needs of the industry. So from now on, or I mean from next year onwards, such indicators will be included. We hope that such data will give you a better idea about the work of the R&D centers. It means that uh, or during the new session, yes, Let's hope that there will be um, more detailed reports. Uh, we want to know about the difficulties. We want to know how we can help them to perform better. Yes, point taken. Mr. Jeffrey Lam, in the paper, it is said that for the S3, uh, there is a cooperation with the Hong Kong MA. That is, they have a FinTech Innovation Hub, and they've also got a um, program to nurture the talents and you set up a laboratory as well so as to carry out R&D work and nurture the talents. I subscribe to this idea but at the same time I want to comment on the manpower, be it the S3, the government or the relevant organizations. I want to know whether you have carried out an analysis if you have can you tell us more about the findings? And then do you have any initiatives to make sure that we have a steady stream of uh, talents to support uh, INT? Um, it is said that uh, we can import the talents, but it will be best if we have a local supply of talents in this uh, sector. And then, of course, recently we are uh, interested in the Bay Area. Uh, for a world class city cluster, um, we want to have a livable uh, living environment. I think the administration should formulate a plan so that we work together with the nine cities as well as Macau. There should be more communication, closer cooperation, um, because uh, the opportunity is not to be passed, is not to be missed. And um, do you have any plans to make sure that um, You will have um, cooperation with the cities in the Bay Area in relation to your uh, INT work and how you're going to identify the business opportunities. I'll try to answer the second and third questions and then for the S3 and the, the S3's uh, work in FinTech, I will defer it to Mr. Or Dr. Tong. Well, it is important to have sufficient manpower if we want to sustain our development. Um, we have the intern program, and what happens is that we give money to the R&D centers so that they will uh, recruit um, 
graduates uh, from local universities. So for the first two years upon graduation, whether they are master degree holders or bachelor degree holders, they will work there and they are given a subsidy by the uh, government. Uh, what we see is that upon graduation, if the graduates can stay in R&D in the initial years, then they will stay there. If they can't get internship and if they go to other industries, they will never come back. So what we want to do is that we hope that they will stay in the R&D uh, field. We believe that uh, it has worked. And we believe that uh, 60 or 70 percent of them uh, will stay on. And we hope that uh, such a program can be continued. As to the case of the Bay Area, well, in fact, we have been talking to the Ministry on Technology. We'll try to see what can be done. And um, in fact, the R&D centers have visited the Bay Area to see whether there will be opportunities for future cooperation. Maybe I can also defer to S3 to talk about fintech. Well, for S3, as far as fintech is concerned, other than developing the technology, uh, we are also uh, having the platform technology. We hope that the industry as a whole can benefit from the te technology. Say, for example, we have the cyber range. Uh, it is um, uh, something that we want to benefit the entire industry. We also talk about infrastructure. For example, we have the innovation hub. Uh, a joint project with the Hong Kong MA. We hope that there will be an independent um, network and then the supply chain can try it. Like for blockchain technology, I think we can try to apply it in the financial services industry. Banks, uh, forwarders, buyers can use the uh, infrastructure that we are offering. And certainly, we would like to nurture the talents. Uh, EFCA and Hong Kong MA, and together with nine or ten universities, uh, we are providing 100 places. So um, the students are involved in FinTech R&D, and it will be launched in September. And then together with CU Hong Kong, uh, we have set up a program. Um, an undergrad program on fintech, and together with Hong Kong U and Hong Kong UST, we have also got a laboratory. Uh, what we are doing now is to work together with Hong Kong UST in relation to a graduate program in fintech. We have a strong demand for fintech uh, talents. We identify a gap, and we hope that S3 can uh, contribute, and we hope that we can sort of. Um, um, put the academia and the industry together. I think we've overrun a bit. Uh, let me sort of summarize uh, what has happened. Uh, I think um, members are concerned about a few areas. First of all, we see a lot of good things in the paper, but um, the indicators cannot reflect the situation um, in a detailed manner. So. When you uh, prepare your report next time, make sure that uh, you will improve upon the format. Remember to include the relevant performance indicators. Now for the uh, marketing, for the commercialization of the results, I'm afraid the paper is not detailed enough. You may not be able to update the paper for this year, but next year when you prepare your report, make sure that you tell us more about the um, applicability as well as the marketing of your R&D results. Mr. Yu referred to a very important point. That is, um, he would like to know about the system. He would like to know how you carry out your evaluation or your, your review. So we are interested in the mechanism. We want to know more about the system that you're running. Um, yes, currently you do have bits and pieces scattered all over the place. Uh, perhaps, Commissioner, you can try to uh, collect the information and you will give us a better idea. Lastly, a word about manpower. Well, for us to have technological advancement, uh, we need um, the right caliber uh, talents. And 
have we got a study on the manpower? Do we know about the uh, gap between demand and supply? And currently, the government has been providing subsidies to uh, have a program for trainees. Um, is it going to assist us? Is it going to be effective? And I hope that you will also give us a report. Um, if we are short on manpower, it will affect our development. Uh, I'm sure uh, such are the main points uh, that members have referred to in their questions. If at all possible, please give us a uh, supplementary uh, paper. Well, I think uh, we've overrun a little bit, but I'm grateful to members for your comments. Uh, next, uh, we move on to the fifth item, promotion of inward investment. Yes, uh, indication of interest to ask questions uh, by short hands. Invest Hong Kong will come. Thank you. I would like to welcome the public officers. Well, at four thirty, we have to vacate the venue, so I will be uh, more conscious about time management. Please keep your remarks succinct. I would like to welcome the team from the administration. There's a paper from the admin, CB bracket one 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 four four slash sixteen to seventeen zero five. We have also got a background brief from the secretariat. Um, same reference number, bracket zero six. I give the floor to the admin. Please keep your briefing uh, succinct because we have to hand over the venue at four thirty to the next meeting. I'll be brief because in a moment I'm going to ask the director. General to give you the details. Uh, today we come here to report to you about uh, the work of Invest Hong Kong as well as the work plan for the coming year. Last year, the global economy uh, was faced with a lot of challenges, but we were still able to give assistance to 391 enterprises coming to set up business in Hong Kong or expand their business in Hong Kong. It is a record high. Uh, they are from the mainland Taiwan and overseas countries. It shows that uh, we are working effectively and we have got a favorable business environment and we are able to attract um, uh, other enterprises to come here to set up business or expand the business. There is still uncertainty in the global uh, economy, but we still continue to attract mainland overseas and Taiwan enterprises to come to Hong Kong. We support the policies of the government and we will be um, targeting at the emerging uh, markets like Asian uh, markets. Uh, we will buy on the uh, business opportunities. We'll make full use of the potential here. I would like to defer to uh, Mr. Stephen Phillips, the Director General of Investment Promotion. Director General, please. Mr. Chairman, um, perhaps I could begin by covering some of the highlights of the results in 2016. Um, as the Permanent Secretary said, um, Invest Hong Kong assisted a record number of 391 overseas mainland and Taiwan companies to set up or expand in Hong Kong. These projects created nearly 4,000 jobs and brought in more than 16.3 billion of investment. Um, the project, projects came from 40 economies. Mainland China continued to be the largest source of investment, followed by the US, the UK, France and Japan. Um, projects came from a very diverse range of sectors, with the highest number from transport and industrial, tourism and hospitality, as well as innovation and technology sectors. Um, companies themselves range from large global corporations all the way through to entrepreneurial led startups. Um, some of the major activities in 2016 included some 7,500 meetings with individual companies across the different markets to provide one-to-one -one advisory services to encourage and support them to set up in Hong Kong. We worked throughout the year with um, other Hong Kong partners, including the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, the Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks Corporation, and Cyberport. We continued with the worldwide initiative called Start Me Up Hong Kong, 
um, and that included a week-long festival held in January 2017, which showcased the sectors where Hong Kong has distinct competitive advantages. Fintech, smart cities, Internet of Things, health technology, as well as retail and fashion technologies. The festival attracted more than 5,500 participants. I apologize, 5,000 participants. Um, during the year, we undertook a third survey um, of the major operators of co-working spaces, incubators, and accelerators. And as at midnight um, 2016, that showed that there had been a year-on-year -year increase of 24% of startups. In September 2016, we set up a dedicated fintech team, and that now has staff in Hong Kong, London, and San Francisco. And this is a very vibrant growth sector. We conducted over 1,600 individual investment promotion meetings um, and organized 27 seminars in mainland cities, including Beijing, Xi'an, Tianjin, Chongqing, um, Xiamen, Wuhan, Changzhou, and Baotou, so a very diverse range. Um, we've also very actively reached out to mainland companies in Hong Kong, most recently, for example, participating in a major event co-organized by the Hong Kong China Hong Kong Chinese Enterprises Association and the Bank of China on China's outbound investment trends and Hong Kong's role. Perhaps I could now mention some of the highlights for 2017-18. We aim to further increase the number of completed projects from 390 in 2016 to 400 in 2017. We're working on refining further the Hong Kong proposition and continue to strengthen our investment investment promotion efforts through a number of strategies. Yeah, excuse me, because no, the time is limited. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think no, all the detail is contained in the paper. Okay. So um, I'll let the, the members to ask the questions and then you provide the answer okay. for further details, okay? Thank you. Um, uh, um, we came to room before 4.30, and so we'd have to be stringent for the time limit. So 40 minutes for Q&A for each. Ms. Chiang. And first question would be, first of all, congratulate Invest Hong Kong in efforts in uh, making a new record of completed 391 projects. This is a historic high in 2016 that demonstrate that Hong Kong is a very attractive place. And of course, um, invest Hong Kong's effort that we need to recognize. And for these 391 projects, which um, um, has been approached by the um, offices, or um, there have been um, the companies, let's say coming from the US, and a registered company here, and someone you don't know, does that be included in the 391 figure? Director General. Invest Hong Kong um, assists include companies that we approach directly ourselves um, through a targeted approach, as well as a number of companies that get introduced to us um, through partners and intermediaries, and also direct um, approaches from companies themselves. Does that answer the question sufficiently? So it's everything included? Or is included? All are included yep. in that total of 391, yes. Ha, so, that's, so everything included, the direct approaches, and well, those um, the directly approached. Why well, I'm asking this question, however, this had to do with my second question. Because as we know, um, these um, bike share services and Uber, Uh, were introduced to Hong Kong by Invest Hong Kong. However, once they entered Hong Kong, and in terms of the Hong Kong regulations, they simply get into a lot of trouble. And their uh, uh, mode of operations have been criticized as um, illegal and even made arrest. And for the bike share company, had been suspected of uh, illegal parking and so forth. And um, during the development, they seem to get into some uh, obstacles. Thus, I w am thinking if this company approached and introduced into Hong Kong, so do we, uh, have, we have you made clear to them about, about the Hong Kong laws? And after you, you um, introduced them to Hong Kong, if, if there are other government departments to help them follow up? 
So now that you have invited them to come over, do we have give them sufficient assistance? So just uh, simply put, for these two companies have seeking seek help from your department department, and have you actively assist them? Thank you. Let me just say a few things. I'll pass on to Secretary General. From my understanding, to invest Hong Kong, and uh, no matter if the companies approached by them, or let's say um two companies or the companies um seeking invest Hong Kong for help, um their way of handling is the same. And when the, um when the, when they approach us, we will relate the Hong Kong situation and the business environment, including if the companies they would like to engage in the business landscape in terms of the regulatory environment and the requirements and before they come to Hong Kong, Invest Hong Kong would explain to them clearly. And also these companies would need to uh um, be clear of the regulatory requirements. So maybe I just pass on to this Directory General. What the Permanent Secretary said, um, with all companies, whatever the source of the inquiry, um, it is our normal practice to take them through both the business environment and specifically highlight to them what the regulatory environment in Hong Kong is. Um, we will help facilitate um, introductions if appropriate and um, if that's suitable. Um, but ultimately, companies take a commercial decision on whether they um, proceed or not. Um, uh, we will also advise them um, where appropriate to take legal advice during the process. Okay. Charles Mock. Um, in first Hong Kong and giving the an annual report and um there's some problems like um the members have said let's say some companies upon arriving in Hong Kong they uh, run into problems. Um, I feel I'm rather baffling that the um, the sec secretary mentioned that uh, before the company arrived in Hong Kong, just like Ms. Cheng, especially to excite to examples that you would um, explain the regulatory problems or potential issues, that I found rather strange because um, uh, when I get in touch with these companies, um, I do not get the f such feeling, and would honestly I don't know how to do that. Maybe you guess that um, transport department and um, using the Uber example that the transport department and the transport and housing bureau would not want to meet them. So I wonder how we're able to um solve problems with them. And these um antiquated regulations um might not be your responsibility or problems. I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of startups or even um the major overseas corporation did told us that um when they approach Invest Hong Kong and you were basically have, uh, showing the same PowerPoint, explaining how good the business environment was, uh, how how convenient it was, and so on. And for other things, we're not able to assist. However, when they get to Singapore, upon touchdown, they have an entire team greeting them and um, uh, touring through different departments. And for any pro for this problem, let's try to solve it. Of course, you can't do it legally. But now that you said that, maybe we'd uh, consult or consider some amendments. In Hong Kong, we can't do this. That's the company. Uh, no, no. Even though I'm in Hong Kong, we have an entire team. After visiting Singapore, I would left speechless. Any company that voted decided to go to Singapore. It happened very often. Could you just check the lead? I know this not something that you can do. It probably had more to do with your department. However, uh, within the government, can you um? Tell the other departments or next term the government that um, this is not working. Can you at least um, try to change the situation internally? Thank you, Chairman. Um, invest Hong Kong, whether for an overseas company before or after you arrived in Hong Kong, and try the best to main, um, maintain liaison and to understand their uh, operating situation. And if necessary, we would provide suitable assistance. Can you cite me some examples? And just like the member have said, that we need to be more proactive 
and a more focused approach um, to maintain communications with this company or to let, help them to understand the Hong Kong business environment. There's some a direction that we'll be working towards that that when we that will be paying more attention when we uh, do our work on promoting inward investment. So maybe we're not able to uh, uh, comment on specific cases and um, the Invest Hong Kong and she's Directory General. Chairman, thank you. Um, I, I think what, what I would say is that we maintain a very regular liaison with the Government Bureau and departments um, and feed through um, information that we pick up both from individual companies as well as from um, Chambers of Commerce um, to help keep the um, whole of government abreast of changing dynamics um, in the business environment. Um, and it is an ongoing process. Okay. Mr. Ma, just wanted to follow up. The government has said um, there were uh, 391 new projects. So, how do you define completed? Uh, what are the um, criteria for completed? Or how about those arriving in Hong Kong or those initially invited by the government or referred to invest Hong Kong? What are their breakdown? And for paragraph 19, it, all I have to do mention a lot of projects. I'm thinking uh, sponsored a lot of um, events or publicity efforts. There are probably 10 projects to be mentioned. Uh, would that include in the 391 or ex excluded from it? The first question. Second question. On the Annex B, I mentioned that um, the, um, about 30% uh, of the startup. I'd like to know uh, what a um this what are the um specific industries creative industries about thirty to forty percent. You have over eight thousand company based in Hong Kong. This so what are the breakdowns of how many of those are the creative industries or how many of those are even media? Can you um respond to this question first? Cheng out. Yes, uh, either the DG or uh, Mr. Ho can provide information. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll try to explain uh, what we call completed projects. For completed projects, it means that uh, in relation to the business, coming to Hong Kong, setting up an office with staff engaged with our assistance, then we'll call it a project, uh, a completed project. For creative industries, well, it is our own way of classification. We cover multimedia, arts, culture, sports and design services. Our understanding is that as far as sports is concerned, we have sports club uh, coming to Hong Kong um, to promote uh, themselves. And then we have got design companies that have come here. And we have also got uh, architects uh, firms will regard such as design services. So what about the 10 plus items in paragraph 19? Will they be counted towards the 391 projects? Well, for paragraph 19, we talk about um, our participation in promotional events like Art Basel. Um, to us, uh, such a good channel is for us to come into contact with interested um, enterprises wishing to come to Hong Kong to set themselves up in Hong Kong, uh, like Art Basel. Well, I would like to know whether 391 would include such. No, not. Then I got the uh, reply. Such are the activities that we participated in. As to the 7,986 uh, foreign funded enterprises in Hong Kong, we haven't got a uh, specific figure, but we know that for publishing, printing, multimedia, I think 2% uh, uh, of the 7,000 plus enterprises fall into that category. Mr. Ma. Well, you have said that the SAR. Uh, the SAR government would like Hong Kong to become a hub for communications and broadcasting. Uh, what have you done to take this up? 
Well, we have encountered a few difficulties, like digital broadcasting has failed, and also our um, um, television stations have failed. Um, so I want to know whether you have done any work in this regard. Um, P.S. I would like to defer to Mr. Hall. Thank you, Chair. My understanding is that there are some international broadcasters. You know that uh, Hong Kong is a international press centre. In the past few years, we have seen the setting up or the expansion of the liaison office of some of the international media, and we have provided assistance. Next, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chen Chen Ying. Thank you. Um, for Invest Hong Kong, of course, we will try to sell the strings of Hong Kong. Um, Hong Kong is the largest offshore RMB centre. But then your positioning is that you would like to uh, Hong, you would like to see Hong Kong as a major asset management centre and investment platform in Asia Pacific, but uh, I haven't seen a word in your paper about promoting the offshore RMB business. So for Invest Hong Kong, please tell us why you haven't worked on such uh, matters. Why are you not uh, promoting Hong Kong as an offshore RMB business centre? And then for NXB, members have also referred uh, to this particular page, and it's about the completed project. According to the breakdown for financial services and also INT, we have seen an increase. I think they are sort of uh, in the um, medium range. I think uh, you set up a dedicated task force on fintech so as to attract mainland and overseas fintech uh, enterprises and R&D uh, enterprises to come here. On the 10th of uh, November uh, last year, uh, the largest enterprise in this field uh, domiciled in Singapore. So I want to know how you're going to face the competition from Singapore as far as fintech is concerned. Uh, P.S. Regarding RMB business, um, as well as um, the asset management, um, we understand that Invest Hong Kong will also emphasize this theme. Uh, we know that uh, when we sort of uh, promote ourselves either on the mainland or in overseas market, we have also emphasized our RMB business. Uh, so uh, we know that this is a role that we would like to promote our, uh, promote to the overseas um, um, clients. Maybe uh, the DG as well as Mr. Ho can further elaborate. Uh, Mr. Chen, if I could add um, on the internationalisation of the RMB and Hong Kong's role, that is a major part of the dialogue that we have. Um, with financial services and professional services firms. So um, whilst it's not reflected in the papers, um, I can assure you that is a very important um, part of the overall story for Hong Kong. Um, perhaps if I could um, address the fintech um, issue. Um, obviously, it's a very fast-moving and vibrant um, area of the economy. With the dedicated team that we've set up in Hong Kong, London and San Francisco, um, alongside the dedicated website, we're working very hard um, to ensure that Hong Kong has its rightful place as one of the major global centres. Um, lots of work going on in many different subsectors, artificial intelligence, insurtech, um, China fintech, cyber security, um, blockchain, some really interesting work going on on blockchain and how that can support um, the Belt and Road Initiative in terms of identity, in terms of security, um, in terms of um, dispute resolution. Um, so that there's a huge amount of very exciting work going on. And I think Hong Kong has really established itself um, as one of the leading global players and centers for fintech. Mr. Ho, thank you, Chair. Regarding the projects, 
we have set up the FinTech uh, Task Force uh, in October last year for the first time. Uh, we organized the first FinTech week, and the uh, response was good. And in fact, uh, between the 23rd and the 27th of October this year, we are going to have the second FinTech week. And we hope that through this activity, we can uh, have more publicity and we can attract more FinTech enterprises to come to Hong Kong. Chair, if I may uh, chip in here. Well, for offshore R&B business, it is said that it has been given weight. But I think you need to sort of uh, give us the information in the breakdown figures so that we have a better idea. Yes, uh, please consider this suggestion. Next, Mr. Yu Siwing. Well, NXB, breakdown by sector. For tourism, I think uh, we used to have it ranking first or second. In other words, overseas investors are still having confidence in our tourism and hospitality uh, sector. Well, uh, for the past three years, I want to know about the total amount of money invested as well as the number of jobs created. And so, do you have an idea about the uh, revenue, the income? And then, I want to know whether there have been cases in which they want to, they have wanted to come but they have failed. And do you know why? In the case of, say, Disneyland, um, they have made a profit and they have sufficient operating venue, uh, revenue, and so they would like to plow back the profits to continue to expand. So, how would you treat um, the amount of money available in that regard? Would this still be regarded as investment? Um, P.S. Mr. Ho, Mr. Ho can answer. Thank you, member, for your question. I'm sorry, uh, I haven't got the figures with me, but then for the uh, amount of investment involving tourism projects, I haven't got a figure with me. For the past three years, um, we were uh, talking to small and medium scale travel agents, uh, catering industry uh, businesses, and also high end. Uh, services uh, in the tourism industry. When we look at the, I mean, after the meeting, we can give you the figures. What we would do is that we'll look at the amount of resources put up by the investor. Where when the investor uh, came to Hong Kong in the first instance, maybe the member would also like to know whether we have got any sort of aftercare service. We did. We did ask the investor. We did ask our client as to the amount of investment, whether there's been an increase, and we'd also like to know whether more jobs have been created and whether they have been employing more staff members. Yes, please uh, supplement the information. What about rolling uh, investment? Rolling investment, uh, we need to strike a balance. Uh, sometimes when we approach our clients, um, Regarding the amount of money involved and the scale of investment, sometimes they may regard it as a commercial secret and they may not be too willing to provide the information to us. Um, but all in all, uh, generally speaking, we can see that for staff uh, members, um, I'm sure they find it easier to share the information with us. And in our sort of aftercare service, uh, whether tourism uh, in particular or whether all the sectors in a whole, uh, on the whole, we have seen an increase. Say, for example, the investment amount was $100 million. What would come under uh, that figure? Um, they transfer $100 million or they sort of uh, give such a figure in the financial statement? Well, we will ask our clients the following questions. There is upon completion of the project, there is a questionnaire for our client to fill out, and then the client will tell us about the investment newly transferred to Hong Kong. It may be direct injection by the overseas parent company or money raised in Hong Kong. We won't sort of make a distinction between the two different sources, but at least we'll ask about the amount, the amount of money invested in the first year. Is there a mechanism to verify the information? Well, we have to strike a balance. 
In other words, no. It's up to them to give you a figure. I think it's an honest system. Dr. Lo Wai Kwong. Thank you, Chair. Well, in this paper, um, it is said that um, the Invest Hong Kong play an active role in major initiatives, and two would stand out. There is the Belgian Road Initiative, as well as the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area. I think ports do did play a very important role in the uh, previous uh, Silk Road, Maritime Silk Road. We want to attract mainland enterprises and overseas investors to come to Hong Kong. We hope that they will regard Hong Kong as a place where investors can take part in the Belgian Road Initiative as well as the Bay Area. Uh, we hope that will be regarded as a springboard. Of course, in this paper, you've only mentioned um, the initiatives briefly, but can you elaborate? Now, let me cite an example. Hong Kong has become a member of the AIIB, and someone from Japan also commented on this. Now, since Hong Kong is joining the AIIB, and They want to know if Hong Kong can provide any assistance to companies who like to take part in the AIB activities as well. So can Invest Hong Kong do something to promote this? Do you have any concrete plans? P.S. Thank you, Chair. Just to give a general reply, we do look forward to the opportunities arising from the Belgian Road Initiative as well as the Bay Area. We hope that Hong Kong can play our role as a super connector. We hope that we can attract mainland enterprises and overseas enterprises to use Hong Kong as a platform, as a springboard to uh, tap into the market of the Belgian Road Initiative and the Bay Area. As to the AIB, well, indeed, it will be a focal area. Uh, in fact, our infrastructural uh, experience as well as our uh, financial services experience uh, will certainly benefit uh, us and add to our attractiveness. As to the details, maybe the Director General can uh, brief you on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would very much agree with the Permanent Secretary. I think there are phenomenal opportunities from both Belt and Road um, and Big Bay. Um, and I think this is both for expansion of the existing um, foreign and mainland investors in Hong Kong as well as many new entrants. And um, one of our priorities will be looking at attracting um, financial and professional services firms, risk management firms, um, infrastructure related firms from the Belt and Road countries to use Hong Kong as a centre. Um, to service the entire Belt and Road route. I think looking in the longer term, there will be phenomenal opportunities in areas as diverse as education, healthcare, um, logistics, and e-commerce. Um, so it's an area of very high priority and something that we're pushing very hard um, in our communications with uh, overseas and mainland investors. Uh, okay. Dr. Lo, uh, we are represented overseas, and uh, I think there is a good network uh, to market Hong Kong. What I feel is that you now many businessmen in Hong Kong are still sort of uh, mind-boggling. Yes, it's a piece of good news for Hong Kong to be a member of the AIB, but we aren't too sure about the concrete uh, benefits of becoming an AIIB member. So I hope that uh, you can tell us more about the concrete initiatives. And please also tell us what we can get from the website. Um, maybe uh, at different panel meetings, uh, we should know more about the Belgian Road Initiative in the Bay Area. I do look forward to the information. Yes, uh, we will uh, follow this up. Mr. Martin Leong, since 2013, Invest Hong Kong uh, has been adopting a sectoral approach, and uh, you have been trying to attract um, enterprises with an advantage to come to Hong Kong, like fintech, financial services, creative industries, um, maritime, uh, logistics, etc. 
In the coming year, uh, I think you will attach importance to logistics, fintech, uh, creative, uh, sorry, innovation and technology. Please tell us um, how you come to such a decision as to the priority sectors. Do you have any uh, figures to back you up, or do you have information about the trends uh, before you come to such a decision? And also, um, please tell us about the performance uh, um, indicators. P.S. For the work plan of the Invest Hong Kong, every year we have the priority uh, sectors. Of course, we have to write on our existing advantage, and we have to look at our uh, economy. We want to know which sectors are attractive, which sectors have huge potential or greater potential, and which sectors are more optimistic in terms of our potential. Maybe the Director General can also brief you on the priority sectors. Um, I, I think the um, the really equate to a focus through the events that we participate in um, and a lot of the communications that we have um, either through traditional media and social media. What, what I would say is that we also actively work with companies from the entire spectrum of the economy at the same time. Um, so that the focus sectors is largely around the overall event program um, and the effort that we have. But that doesn't mean that we don't support companies um, who show an interest in Hong Kong from a wide variety of sectors. Um, in terms of how we shape that focus, um, some of this is determined um, by policy initiatives, so looking at maritime, looking at aircraft leasing into the future, looking at fintech, um, looking at corporate treasury centres. Those are policy driven. Others are driven by some global trends around um, what key sectors are developing very rapidly, for instance, fintech. So there are a number of things that shape um, our overall approach. Question uh, for the Invest Hong Kong and the uh, for the uh, HKMA. This is IFO with HKMA, and this collaboration would include helping enterprise investors to take advantage of the opportunities for the Belt and Road Initiatives. And the um, the infrastructure association has have introduced um, introduce institution investors and um, the um, investor operators. And how do we, uh, invest Hong Kong community with ILO network in helping the enterprises and investors to making their commercial decisions or deciding their um, business operations. Um, Secretary, Mr. Ho, simply put, uh, we work with the HKMA uh, in different er few areas and consider the Belt and Road initiatives and last October and April this year. One of our work is to help mainland enterprises and how to uh, better use Hong Kong as a springboard and using our financial services uh, for overseas acquisitions or uh, one belt and road projects. And the last October and this April, uh, we had met with HKMA Networks and to, uh, inviting um, the Chinese Enterprise Station in Hong Kong, um, for example, concerning the copy treasury policies in Hong Kong and how to um, uh, leverage the Hong Kong financial services. And uh, looking overseas acquisition and using the HKMA's network to, to help companies already in Hong Kong to um, exploit Belt and Road opportunities. Mr. Wong. According to uh, um, UTAD latest surveys. The global e commerce market has reached about um um twenty five trillion US dollars in US, Japan and Hong Kong have, have taken up about um I think a leading position in this sector. I would like to ask invest Hong Kong on the Hong Kong e-commerce sector, do you have any plans in place 
I saw for the document, the entire document, there is no mention of any promotion of e-commerce or, uh, let's say, um, introduce, um, introduce uh, huge companies into Hong Kong. Secretary, for the, uh, for the uh, work plan, I would uh, love to Mr. Hell. The e-commerce, like Mr. Wong have said, is growing importance. And um, besides, we had to cater for them and uh, um, invest promotion in Hong. We would, we would like to um, uh, greatly uh, promote the e-commerce in Hong Kong in general. So, how do we in attract foreign investors? Um, and create a more vibrant and vibrant e-commerce. That will be also a key area of concern for Invest Hong Kong. Uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Mr. Ho to explain um, what is the current consideration for the work plan. Mr. Ho, on e-commerce in the past, uh, what in mainland and overseas, uh, we have also uh, e-commerce companies um, attracted to Hong Kong. Um, they come to because Hong Kong as a market itself, as well as using Hong Kong to approach overseas potential buyers or potential suppliers who are serving as a platform. Because um, big companies, um, the Secretary mentioned that um, since the rapid pace of e-commerce, especially in uh, for the um, startup ecosystem, our department had performed an annual survey on startups and the e-commerce companies in the past. In 2015, we surveyed about 142. And last year, in the middle of last year, you have it increased into 250. Thus, uh, we'll keep working on that. And for the uh, st e-commerce startup, and every year we had this, the Startup Hong Kong Week, we would uh, included e-commerce and also through our uh, mainland overseas output we continue to approach e-commerce related enterprises in attracting them to come to Hong Kong. Mr. Dr. Yu, I found that um, the some um, inconsistency in the uh, figures this electrical secretariat have compiled the Invest Hong Kong work from the year 2000 and last year 2016, we can see that the completed projects keep on the rise. And even to and to a one eight or one nine, is still on a upward trend. Thus, the employment, jobs created would be right, right positive. However, looking at the figures and for 08, 09, it was like the number of jobs actually fell. And 2017, it seems to be. On the drop, so have we, I don't have the latest figures. Have we have uh, done a survey of uh, after they arrive into Hong Kong, or uh, then whether uh, the number of companies leaving Hong Kong, because uh, because they have compiled the figures of them which have Hong Kong where thus you create um this um, statistical upward trend. That, uh, um, invest Hong Kong. And will uh, have aftercare support to companies arrive in Hong Kong. They will keep in. We will keep in touch with them, and to understand your state of business and the number of staff employed. I will pass on to Mr. Ho to elaborate, Mr. Ho. In terms of employment statistics, uh, uh. Upon their arrival in Hong Kong, we we'll try to get information on, like, um, the number of jobs created in Hong Kong. We plan to uh, create, we'll, which we will um, collect such information. We we'll also have a mechanism in place that, as soon as the project ar arrived in Hong Kong, we would make a uh, two visits within um, eight to twelve months, twelve to eighteen months. We'll know what um, their latest intuition. And the next survey will be done on 30 to 36. We would have made such a comparison. In the paragraph 24, you mentioned that in 2016, we visited um, 616 um, um, uh, aftercare visits, and about 90% uh, of them are still in operation, and the number of employees. 
、um, has on the rise compared when they first set up in Hong Kong. Don't you feel that the, the, the figure seems to be、um, meaningless? Let's say in 2008 or 2009, let's say it、um, on global economic tsunami, and yet your figures still go up, still went up. Thank you, Chairman. It looking at the、um, paper which came with the Secretariat that on the this is the jobs created in the first year. And these jobs, in compare, let's say in tw in 2008, we have completed 257 set projects, and it's their first year. They would they told us that we plan to hire、uh, 2,450 jobs. So, do you feel that it makes sense to you? But that was an economic downturn. A lot of companies were、uh, gone close, and yet you see a record. A major increase compared to last year. Um, Chairman, um, we're using the、uh, figure from the Secretariat as the focus, and you can see in two thousand and oh eight, oh nine, as just two hundred years, rather seems a tiny figure compared to the total number of enterprises in Hong Kong. And the employment cr created is around um two thousand ish, and it seems to be similar to the um bigger economic climate. And a yearly figure has to be um dropping up and down this year. However, um, uh, ten years on, okay, um, we can see an overall upward trend. And however, year on year. We could see a rise or a decline. So I see the number completed to be on the rise. It would only be on the rise. However, the number of jobs created would keep on rising, because this is an, an absolute. So this is the absolute. So there have been no decrease on the jobs created. However, you never、um, collect data of how many companies actually leave Hong Kong. So invest Hong Kong would just be keeping adding Hong Kong more Hong Kong jobs. Anything to add, to Secretary? I will let the Secretary、um, Director to add further information. The jobs vary year on year, and they're influenced quite significantly by the sectors in which the projects take place.、Um, so, certain industries, if you look at tourism, hotels, for instance, can create a very large number of jobs from a single project. Um, whereas other sectors, let's say a law firm, may only create、um, a handful of jobs in the first year, so I think that's why there's quite a lot of variability year on year.、Um, so without delving、um, into the detail year on year as to what the exact mix of the projects was, it's quite hard to answer the question with specificity.、Um, in terms of、um, the figures presented here, we are looking and presenting year one figures、um, for companies. Um, uh, rather than looking at the the overall aggregates, but I think in the、um, annual survey of companies that we do with the Census and Statistics Department, that attempts to measure the total number of jobs、mm -hmm. um, that have been created by foreign and mainland investors in Hong Kong. And if I recall correctly, the total number of jobs continues to rise, and currently, from the survey data, stands at about four hundred thirty-five thousand jobs. Yeah, I suggest right.、Uh, maybe you can take a look how many firms are leaving Hong Kong, ra rather than just counting how many coming into. Mr. Chair, can we check the records? 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 Ask this question just with the, the as much as possible. The chairman is correct. Now that we times up, and the second, the secretary and a lot of colleagues have pointed out that invest Hong Kong at, at the meeting where the, under the document there are a lot of、uh, work or need to be things you need to be strengthened, and would have some serious follow up, especially、um, when dealing with the neighboring cities, but also the competition going on. Let's say Singapore. We can、um, invite for investment to actually assist them、um, to resolve uh, 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 
different bureaucracy red tape. Thus, I hope the secretary on on how to proactively assist uh, the companies you invited to um make some breakthrough instead of um just merely contact them after after it be introduced in Hong Kong. Let's say Uber or Gobi bikes problems actually reflects that um in the process the companies may not be familiar with the regulatory environment or when they ran into tr troubles um uh, the bureau on uh, support seems to be insufficient. And thank you, for the Chairman's comments. We'll work towards this direction. Was there any opportunity um, in the future that you would uh, submit a, a work plan direction on how to play a more proactive role in investment promotion? And if the Chairman agrees, then maybe at the uh, next report, we'll can explore and how to report on your latest progress, and that will be next year. Come maybe earlier. We try. We try. And thank you for attending the meeting today. And the meeting is now adjourned. There being no other business. Meeting is now adjourned.